Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we've got our Virus Metal Grim on Matt, and we're joined by Hackbond in the, the Apple Drive version 2. Um, and that's because we're going to be taking a look at the blue deck that I built. And there isn't either of them in there. I wish they would make uh, some Digimon cards uh, for Appmon. I doubt that's going to happen, considering the fact that it was never brought over stateside. So it doesn't make much sense to me. But I chose them because I was trying to figure out, like, oh, what, which one kind of fits the theme. And my blue deck I built uh, with Vmon in mind. And I'm like, well, he digivolves with uh, Stingmon. So Appmon was all about uh, taking two and fusing them together. They took two rookies and fused them into a uh, champion. They took two champions and fused it into an ultimate. They took two ultimates and fused it into a mega. So this kind of seemed loosely uh, thematic. Plus, I don't get to take these guys out. So why not? Uh, so starting out, just like last time, uh, we got the memory counters. Which I went with uh, the Vidramon ones, which, again, as I stated in the last video, I like because they are nice, thick plastic. As opposed to the very flimsy paper ones. So I just like that added bit. Uh, next, scrolling a little fast on these, uh, we got... The instructions. And I'm just scrolling fast because these are the rules. You guys know the rules. I hope you know the rules. Uh, if you don't, that's fine too. Maybe you're just a collector who likes the cards. And next up, we've got the uh, the eggs. Starting off, we got uh, one I'm on. We got three copies. Um. This one has the effect of your turn, while your opponent has two more Digimon with no Digivolution cards in play, this Digimon gets plus 2,000 DP. And then we got two demi Vmons, which is your turn once per turn. When this Digimon becomes unsuspended during your main phase, it gets plus 1,000 DP for the turn. Uh, so I went with two and three because I don't see any of these happening all the time. So I'd rather like a somewhat even split. Like this one just seems slightly more likely for them to have because of Blue's playstyle and removing stuff. Uh, but this is good kind of towards late game things. So then we get into the rookies. And this is not going to be nearly as single Digimon centered as either uh, the Greymon deck or the Dioboromon deck. Because there have been a lot of Agumons, there's been a lot of uh, Karamons. Not and both of those really worked in their own kind of synergies with their own cards. Here, not so much. So starting out, we've got uh, four copies of this starter deck, Agumon. And again, if you haven't watched the last video, I'm not going over a price breakdown of these uh, because I started with the starter deck. And that's already a deck built in itself. And it comes with one pack, which allows you to mix and match. They haven't done that in... The later ones, but uh, still they give you some promo cards. So I'm not going over prices. I'm also not doing a side deck um, because this is fun decks. I don't plan on bringing them places and then swapping out cards. This is just for casuals. Anywho, four copies of this Gobblemon, which is a three play cost, a zero digital cost, 2000 DP, no active effect. The inherited effect of when attacking, trash the Digivolution card at the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon with uh, level 5 or less. Um, so, yeah, that just kind of allows you to trash cards off your opponent's Digimon, which is one of the staples of a blue deck. So definitely had to put him in. And then from the uh, U-Force Vigramon starter deck, we got four copies of Dracomon. He's a three play cost, a zero digit blue cost, 2000 DP. On play, reveal the top three cards of your deck. Add one Digimon card with Dramon in its name among them to your hand. Place the remaining cards uh, at the bottom of your deck in any order. So, like, 
Vidramon, Aero Vidramon, uh, U Force Vidramon. I can reveal the top three cards of my deck, pick one of those, put them into my hand. The other two go on the bottom of the deck. So I'm not losing any resources. I'm not discarding those cards. Uh, so that's that makes this one very good and useful for four in the deck. Also from the U Force deck, we got two copies of Vimon. He's a three play cost, a zero digivolution cost, 2000 DP. Your turn, uh, if your opponent has a level six or higher Digimon in play, this Digimon can digivolve into a U Force Vidramon in your hand for memory cost of four, ignoring its digivolution costs. And then his inherited effect is when attacking, if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, trigger draw one card. Uh, so I like his top ability because that gives me some. Uh, like leeway where like I could pay three memory for him and then something like four memory to just straight go into a big beater uh, if I'm worried about my opponents and I have the opening to take it out. That could be very useful. And uh, when attacking having seven or fewer cards in your hand, you draw one. That, that could be very useful to get those like eight or more effects and he's going to tie in uh, with one of the U-Force Vidramons later. Next up, we have a Golemon, who's a three play cost, zero digivolution cost, 3000 DP, on deletion, gain one memory. Um, I have him in here because if I need to use uh, someone with blocker or something like that, just getting that one memory would be good. Otherwise, I could probably swap this one out for something else. And then we've got a different Golemon, a promo. Uh, this is a three play cost, zero to blue sauce, 1000 DP, and the inherited effect of your turn once per turn, when you trash a Digivolution card from one of your opponent's Digimon, gain one memory. Uh, so this is kind of, gives memory like the other Golemon, but this one can happen once every single turn. And again, going with how easy it is to discard Digivolution cards from your opponents, this is kind of a staple for it. Now we're into the champions. And we have got uh, three copies of this Garurumon. Now it is the same card because those two have the same numbers. It's just different images. This one is from the uh, like tournament incentive pack number one. And uh, this is the basic uh, artwork, I believe. And I like this one because it, like, it's got more of a, like, manga, like, OVA anime kind of vibe to it. Whereas this one is really, like, stylized. Um, and kind of almost ultra-realistic. Anywho, they are 5 play costs, 2 digivolution costs, 4,000 DP. And they have the inherited effect of, when attacking, trash the Digivolution card at the bottom of one of your opponent's Digimon. So like I said, going with that Golemon, like, super easy to start trashing things and uh, making them weaker. And we got three copies of this. So it's not super uncommon to happen. Next up, we got some Vidramon. Uh, these two, again, from the starter deck. Uh, it is a four play cost, two Digivolution cost, 5,000 DP. No active effect, uh, inherited effect. If you have eight or more cards in your hand, return one of your opponent's level three Digimon to its owner's hand. Uh, trash all of the Digivolution cards of that Digimon. Uh, so that's not going to happen very often because it's a level three. But it is an ability that could be pulled off uh, if you have eight or more cards in your hand. So I put two copies in. Simply to kind of stop Rookie Rush type stuff. Whoop. Sorry about that. Next up, we've got uh, two copies of this Vidramon. Uh, and it is a five play cost, two Digivolution cost, 5,000 DP. Active effect of while you have a blue tamer in play, this Digimon gains jamming and no inherited effect. Jamming, in my opinion, is super useful. Uh, I played a casual game, and, like, I had a champion that just had jamming. 
and I must have swung with that like three times into their security stack, uh, and it just wouldn't die, and they, they like, I don't know why, I think they were just bricking, but just even being able to like swing once into a security stack and not worry about its death, and having your opponent being like, oh, I need to focus on this for a second, super good card. Then the last of our champions is three copies of this Vidramon Zero uh, promo. It is a six play cost, a two digit blue cost, 5,000 DP. And when attacking, if you have a blue tamer, you may trash the top three cards of your deck to give this Digimon 2,000 DP for the turn. And the inherited effect of when attacking, you may place three non egg Digimon cards from your trash to the bottom of your deck in any order to activate draw one card. So as I've said, I do not like cards that allow you, that make you like trash stuff. But this one's got some synergy to it. Because you can attack with it, trash the top three cards of your deck. And then later on when it digivolves, uh, you can take those three cards back from your trash. Put it underneath your deck uh, in any order. And then draw one card. So you're getting a bonus here and you're getting a bonus here. This guy just has to survive uh, the attack. And that could be hard, but that's a risk-reward that I do kind of like. Because uh, I'm not worried about losing those. And even if I don't use this top effect, like at some point, I'm going to have three or more non dj cards in my trash. And so I could just attack with it, take the three cards out of the trash, put it in the bottom of the deck in any order, uh, and get to draw one card. And then I might be able to even unsuspend it and do it a second time. Because it doesn't say once per turn. You can just do it. So I really like that one. Next up, we have uh, two copies of this Aero Vidramon. It's a 7 play cost, 3 digivolution cost, 7,000 DP. Another one with jamming, uh, which I really like. And then uh, the inherited effect of while you have 8 or more cards in your hand, this Digimon gains security attack plus 1. So this one works with that V-Dramon, or V-Mon, uh, where V-Mon lets you draw a card if you have seven or few, and if you have seven and you go up to eight, then all of a sudden this guy goes from uh, versing one to versing two cards in the security stack without activating them, which is uh, super good. Or actually, I'm sorry, I said that wrong because this is the inherited effect. That wouldn't work, but uh, just getting that second one later on would be super great. So next to the ultimates, we got one copy of Zudamon. He's a 7 play cost, a 3 digivolution cost, 6,000 DP. On play, draw 2 cards from your deck. Nice and simple. Very great. Uh, so for a 7 cost, you play him down, you get to draw 2 cards. It's a hefty cost, but it could be useful if you need those 2 cards and if you've got that memory to spare. And then the inherited effect of when attacking... If your opponent has a Digimon with no Digivolution cards in play, gain one memory. Uh, so that helps you get some back uh, when it's a Mega. And then back to the Vidramon stuff, we got three copies of this Arrow Vidramon. Who's an 8 play cost, a 3 Digivolution cost, 7,000 DP. When Digivolving, if you have a Blue Tamer in play, unsuspend one of your Blue Digimon. Uh, and the inherited effect of when this Digimon becomes unsuspended during your main phase, it gains jamming uh, for the turn. So that is super useful. Again, uh, definitely something that I like having jamming. And it can work together where it's like uh, if you've got a Mega out and it's got this ability and you, uh, you play this down, then you get to unsuspend that one. If it's got one of these underneath him, then he gains jamming. And you can attack again with it, which is super great. So I like that. And then moving away again from the Vidramons, we have two copies of this Magna Anjumon. Uh, it's a six play cost, a three digit cost, 7,000 DP. No active effect, but the inherited effect of when attacking... Trash the bottom Digivolution card of one of your opponent's Digimon. 
Uh, so again, I want a lot of those in there just to like help mitigate. Like I've got a battle plan with uh, just a pure Vidramon kind of thing, but this can also help uh, reduce the power of the opponent's stuff. And now we're on to the Megas. And we're starting out with two copies of the starter deck, U-Force Vidramon. It's a 12 play cost, 4 Digivolution cost, 12,000 DP. When Digivolving, return one of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon to its owner hand. Trash all the Digivolution cards of that Digimon. And when attacking, once per turn, if you have 8 or more cards in your hand, unsuspend this Digimon. Uh, so for this one, there's kind of a good amount of stuff going on here where uh, I get to return an opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon. And normally I would write that off of like, when is that going to happen? But because if your opponent puts down a Mega with the uh, rookie uh, Vimon, then they might have like another one starting to build up. And you can just play the Vimon, play this on top of it, and immediately just go, nope, that one is trash and everything else. Or that one goes back to your hand and everything else underneath it is trash. And then that second ability, uh, where you have eight or more cards in your hand, unsuspend this Digimon, that works with some of the other cards, uh, which I will go over in a hot minute. Uh, so the other two Megas we've got are the other U-Force Vidramons, which is a 13 play cost, a 3 devolution cost, 11,000 DP, your turn, when one of your blue tamers becomes suspended, unsuspend this Digimon. And your turn, once per turn, when this Digimon becomes unsuspended during your main phase, gain one memory. So that is very good. Uh, with Especially with the tamers that we got. Uh, so the first one up is Davis. And this is a four play cost. Uh, and he's got the start of your turn. If you have two memory or less, set your memory to three. I like having at least one of these types of cards in every deck um, because that is a very useful one. Uh, I mean, besides the Dioboromon deck, but the Dioboromon deck has one where it's, uh, if you have uh, unidentified in the trash, gain one memory, and those can stack. So it more or less makes out for each other. Then on play, reveal the top three cards of your deck, add one blue and one green Digimon card among them to your hand, Place the remaining cards at the bottom of your deck in any order. So we have no green cards, which means we're only getting to add one blue. So it's not nearly as powerful, but still it's all right. And then the security effect is play this card without paying its memory cost. Pretty straightforward. Uh, then the other tamer we got is three copies of this uh, Ty V Tamer promo. And he's a two-play cost. Uh, main, if you have a Digimon with Vidramon in its name, you may suspend this Tamer to activate one of the following effects. Either draw one card, or one of your Digimon gets plus 1,000 DP for the turn. And the security effect of play this card without paying its memory cost. I really like this. This is what I wish more Tamers were like. Where if you meet a certain condition you get to do one of two things. Because uh, this is very versatile, in my opinion. And it's a cheap play cost. Like, yeah, plus 1,000 isn't great. But being able to trigger one, draw one card from your deck, like, it gives it that versatility. Where this one, uh, it's definitely worth having. And that can help add to the eight or more cards in your hand. And play with some other synergy. Now we get into the option cards. We're starting off with uh, three copies of Hammer Spark, uh, with the two different artworks again from two different uh, starter decks, if I remember correctly. Zero play cost, gain one memory. Security effect, gain two memory. Uh, this is at three to me because, like, if they get in the security stack, that could really mess up an opponent. But also, just gaining one memory on my turn, that could be the difference between uh, going over to an opponent's turn or being able to continue my play just a little bit longer. I definitely like those. Next up, we have one copy of Mad Dog Fire. Uh, this is a one play cost. Uh, 
main one of your Digimon gets plus 3,000 DP for the turn. And then security effect, draw one card, then add this card to its owner's hand. That is a great effect if it's in the security uh, pile. Uh, I get to draw a card from my hand and then add this card to my hand. So that's plus one uh, card advantage. Because yes, I did have to give up one card in the security stack. But it's pretty good. Next up, uh, we got this uh, Sorrow Blue. It's a two play cost. Main, choose one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards. That Digimon can't attack or block until the end of your opponent's next turn. And then the security effect is choose one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards. That Digimon can't attack or block until the end of your next turn. Uh, so yeah, pretty much same ability in both ways, just worded different. Um, so one activates for the current turn, and the other one activates for the opponent's uh, next turn. So it's, for a two-play cost, like being able to stall out a bit, definitely worth it. Or making it so that they can't uh, block your attack, so you can beat over their stuff without actually having to beat over it. It's very useful. Next, we got two copies of V Nova Blast. It's a two-play cost. Main, one of your Digimon gains jamming uh, for the turn. In security effect, add this card to its owner's hand. I've stated how much I love jamming, and using this would really help uh, in some situations. Next up, two copies of Heart Attack, or Hearts Attack. Three play cost, main trash all Digivolution cards under one of your opponent's Digimon. That's for three. That is for three. They could have a level seven out. Uh, a level 7, like, Armageddon or... No, Armageddon level 6. But they could have, like, an Omnimon or a Chaos Mon with just, like, a stack of abilities. And you'd just be like, no. Goodbye, all that stuff. And that helps activate some of the other cards in the deck. So that's why this one's at 2. Uh, I might... If I was to make a side deck, I'd definitely put another 2 copies in this. Next up, we got this uh, Death Parade Blaster. It's a three play cost. Main, trash up to two Digivolution cards from the bottom of all of your opponent's Digimon. Then if you have a green Digimon in play, suspend one of your opponent's Digimon with no Digivolution cards. So really we're only getting half the ability of this. Um, where we get to trash two Digivolution cards from the bottom of all your opponent's Digimon. Uh, and then... The security effect, uh, activate this card's main effect. Um, again, if I was to build a side deck for this, uh, I'd probably throw in some Dino Beamons or something like that. Uh, something that activates, that uh, works as both a blue and a green. Like next set, I'm they're doing half and halves, and so I'll probably throw in a couple of those just so I can get these extra effects. But until then, I'm only getting half the effect. Next up, we got uh, this Coyote's Breath, which is a 7-play cost. Main, return one of your opponent's Digimon to its owner's hand. Trash all the Digivolution cards of that Digimon. Security effect, activate this card's main effect. So this is another, like, good stall card. Um, its cost is high, but again, I don't mind playing it if my opponent has just, like, some big beat stick. Uh... Like in my red deck, if they ha if I have War Greymon out with all those like optimum cards, playing seven to get rid of it, it's a no-brainer. I think even if uh, I've got zero memory at that point, and they're going to get seven, like pushing that back to their hand and trashing everything underneath, that is a lot of resources for a single card. And that's the thing to think about when is a card good or not. It's how many cards. It's card advantage. Like, if I play one card and I get rid of two of my opponents, that's worth it. You always have to remember, like, extra cost, though, because if it's, like, a, I think it's a purple card where it's um, play this card, sacrifice one of your Digimon to destroy two of your opponent's Digimon, that's not a one for two, that's a two for two, because you are playing one card from your hand, getting rid of one card on the field to get rid of two of your opponent's card. So you just have to be aware of how much resources... 
Um, but for something like that, I think it's worth it. I think Heart's Attack is better, which is why I put two of them in the deck. Uh, and then for the final one, which is like the big one, it's Howling Crusher, seven play cost. Trash all Digital Illusion cards under all of your opponent's Digimon. Uh, security effect, activate this card's main effect. This is another one, which is if it's in the security pile, like, it's going to just wreck them. But even if I pull it, like, I'd want to use it. Uh, it's great. Uh, in fact, like, just thinking about it, I might, I might have to take this one out and put another copy of this in, because they basically do the same thing. Like, this returns one to the opponent's hand. This one trashes. Well, no, there's, there's, this would be another thing if I had a side deck. If I had a side deck, I would put extra copies of these in there so I could swap and swap as I want. So that was the blue deck, and, like, what am I trying to build in this, essentially? And uh, starting with, like, yeah, like, Demi Vimon. Uh, when this Digimon becomes unsuspended during your turn, it gains 1,000 DP. Uh, put v on him. Uh, and, like, if I need to, he can immediately go into one of the U for his v -Dramons. Otherwise, have him go into v Zero. Uh, which would give him... You may place three non dj cards in your trash to the bottom of your deck in order to draw one card when attacking. And then have him go into Aero v Dramon. Uh, if this has eight or more, if you have eight or more cards in your hand, this gain, Digimon gains security attack plus one. And then really from there, I could go into either of the uh, U-Force v Dramons, but like going into this one, which when one of your blue tamers becomes suspended, unsuspend the Digimon. Your turn once per turn. When this Digimon becomes unsuspended, you may uh, gain one memory. And then having a tie out and having the V-Force Nova Blast would just make this guy that much harder to deal with because he gets jamming. So like he only becomes uh, 1,200, which is fairly low, which is why I'd want the V-Nova Blast because then he's not triggering anything in the security stack. He's got 1,200. Um, he attacks. I can... Uh, place the three bottom cards of my trash onto my deck to draw one. If I have seven or fewer cards in my hand, I would get to draw one. So that's two cards, which means if I have six cards when that starts, I'd be able to uh, give him security attack plus one to it. Uh, so he's 1,200, swings into it, uh, and he becomes suspended. Then immediately, I could suspend this one to give him either plus a thousand or draw him an extra card if I need to do that. Like if I didn't reach the eight yet, I could draw one card. He becomes unsuspended because I've suspended a uh, blue tamer. And then I could swing again for another two and activate all their effects again, where I get to draw one card if I have seven or fewer. I could return three back to get another one. Uh, and then he's got another security. So he could be doing four... And if I have multiple of this tie out, I could do it another two times because I got three in the deck. So I could either give, get more cards or I could boost him up more. So he goes from a 12 to a 13 to a 14 if I have all three of them out. So that's kind of what this one's going for, where it's not a straight up missile like a uh, War Greymon, but it's kind of like, up, oh, yep, here we go, and here we go again, and here we go a third time. So that's, that's what this one I was building, uh, I wanted to do. Like, I kind of went with uh, Vimon early on. I uh, wanted to build the U-Force Vidramon, and then I kind of improved on it as time went by. Uh, if I had to build a side deck for this, like I said, I'd probably throw some of the blue-green cards in there. Uh, I've already said some of the stuff, what I would do. I failed to mention for the red deck what I would do for a side deck, and I'd probably put some Agubons in that. Uh, 
maybe some ancient Greymon, uh, swap out some of those lower ties for ones that help uh, with Agubond or uh, Emperor, some hybrid stuff maybe. Uh, but yeah, that is the blue deck that I built. Before we sign off, we have another pack to open. So let's see. Um, Melgarumon was blue at one point, so that would be kind of thematic, I guess. Uh, the other two don't really fit. Let's see what we got. We got Grand Kuagamon. Uh, I guess this one kind of fits. I mean, Vmon Digivolves with Stingmon. Here's a bug. That could work. It's an 11 play cost, a 3 Digivolution cost, 11,000 DP. Uh, Digiburst 2, so remove 2 cards from underneath them. One of your Digimon gains security attack 1 for the turn. Um, again, it's alright. Uh, Digiburst never really got off the ground because no one liked putting in the resources, as I said in the last video. Uh, if they make option cards that allow you to take cards from your trash and put them back underneath, uh, these Digimon, I think Digiburst will become a lot more viable. Again, like I said, like, four play cost, uh, put one Digimon underneath uh, a valid Digimon in play. If you have eight or more cards in your trash, uh, put two instead. Because that would fuel the Digiburst with the way that it works. Um, and I feel like that would uh, that'd fit the playstyle of it. Because you'd get those eight from using Digiburst. So with that, we have taken a look at the blue deck that I've built. Uh, next video, we will take a look at the yellow deck. Um, if you have any comments on like what I should uh, improve about this deck, leave it down below. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, please subscribe. It really does help. Uh, I think I'm like 20 away from triple digits, which that'd be cool. Uh, and until then, I will see you next time.